Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You know, thank you for tuning in. So today, in the second part of our tutorial, we're gonna put everything together after we have created the bamboo trees and you know prepared all the assets. We are now going to put everything into a final scene. Yeah, and set up the scene. I will also go through some of the settings that I use on how to create this bamboo forest scene. So without further delay, let's continue. Okay, so here is a screenshot of my speed tree. One of the things that I want to highlight is that when we export the bamboo tree, make sure that the Atlas option is set to none. As I want to further enhance the bamboo bug in Unreal Engine, like I want to include some scratches and stuff like that, if we choose everything as the Atlas option, speed tree will combine all the textures into one texture. It's very hard to make changes in Unreal Engine. So what I want is I want something very clean. The bug material will just use the original bug texture that I downloaded from textures.com when it's imported into speed, uh, Unreal Engine. So remember when I export, make sure that the Atlas option is set to none. Yeah, so I want to quickly highlight. So as per what I've said, if we export the speed tree file, into one single atlas, what will happen is when we import into Unreal Engine, the bug texture and the leaves texture will be combined into one single file. Yeah, which is not exactly what I want. So what I want is not to combine the atlas so that it will export the texture as one single file like that. Okay? Or rather, it will export the texture as um, the original texture that I have downloaded from textures.com. So from there, I can then do uh, enhancements into the the uh, bug. Okay, so on to the bug material. This is the bug material that was imported from Speed Tree, the original material. Very simple material. The diffuse map is here, and then there's a normal map with some Speed Tree input for the wind. So very simple. I want to make some enhancements into the material like adding some scratches and stuff like that so this is the new material that i have modified in the in unreal engine for the bug yeah or for the bamboo stem so first of all make sure that the material is in the opaque blend mode yep originally it's in mask so because this is not a leaf material we don't really need the mask blend mode okay and the second thing is I have a height map from the original textures.com uh, file that I downloaded. So, so let's include that into the materials um, to make it more realistic. Yep, of course the second the, the other thing is I have also the original roughness map. I kind of inverted it because I felt that the original roughness map was a bit too shiny. So I inverted it to make it a little bit more rough. You know, and uh, I, I added this into the specular node so that, you know, it, it looks a little bit less uh, reflective, which is uh, usually how a bamboo bug looks in the bamboo forest. So, so, of course, most of the time we don't play around with the specular value, but sometimes we may do it for artistic reasons. Yeah, so just experiment. Of course, the, the other thing is this portion where I want to add the scratches into the bamboo uh, bug material. So, so first of all, I have the old bamboo diffuse material that I then use lerp to lerp them both together. And the alpha, I use a scratch alpha that I downloaded from Mega Scans. Yeah. So when I do that, you can see that um, I included some of the scratches material to make it again look more realistic. Okay, so not, nothing fancy here. Texture coordinate is, is just one one, the original one. Yep, and it looks good. So the other thing that I added was the color variation. Um, because like I say, when you look at the reference pictures in the bamboo forest, there's actually not just one plain color. There are many, many um, different shades of green. So after experimenting around, playing around, I felt that the value 0.1 is good enough for this particular bug. Um, texture okay so I started the scene with a landscape yep very simple landscape 
nothing fanciful just a 7x7 landscape and I created a simple ramp here this is for guidance so that when I place the steps and the stairs and, and then when I put in the 3D assets, 3D ground assets on the landscape it, it will help me on the kind of angle that I need to angle my grounds in I also place a sort of like a plane mesh here so that when I lay my bamboos it will be easier yeah and this plane mesh is actually elevated you know slightly higher than the the ground here on this side so so a simple landscape uh, actor and then let's continue okay next I added a HDRI backdrop okay so a simple HDRI backdrop yep nothing much have changed I use my own HDRI that I downloaded and I increased the size from 150 to 500 to make it a bit more realistic okay and um, the other thing is the skylight is set to movable because it's we are going to use DFAO distance field ambient occlusion for our bamboo trees so when we set it to movable it will activate the DFAO of course the intensity it was uh, you know after experimenting around I find that the intensity of 0.8 is the best but when you play around you can play around with your own intensity to capture the mood that you want so one more thing that I also want to highlight for HDR eyes especially is that when you use your own HDR file file usually it's very big in size usually I download the 8k version make sure to change it back to change the texture size back to 8k and the mid gen settings to no mid maps you know sometimes you get very blurry HDRI because they are imported um, as very small files yeah so if you change it back you will get the sharper version so that's one thing to note for HDR um, HDRI files okay after that I place the stairs and the floors onto the landscape yeah so these are mega sense assets so I put the steps you know and uh, angled nicely to the ramp and the floor so the floors not necessarily all to be the same have some different variations so that we can have a little bit more uh, variations yeah I think that's the word to to have some creativity and and everything doesn't look the same some some organic feel to it okay and after that I added walls yeah and the uh, hitch post to the scene okay so the walls uh, act as a very important part of the scene because as you can see it covers the ground just beside it so it's rather important because I don't want to spend too much time um, putting in the details of the ground you know like vegetation grass and stuff like that so having the walls covering the the near shots of this um, of this world will actually help in creating the realism so we can see the walls and we won't see the you know the quote quote the fakeness of the ground yeah of course of course we will put in a little bit of effort but I didn't want to put in all the grass and rocks and and make it really really um, nice you know I, I don't want to spend the time to do that I want to spend the time on the bamboo tree so the walls kind of act like a cover for them yeah so the walls are pretty important so finally I added the grounds yeah so these grounds are 3d assets from mega scans so they look a lot more real and so I'll use this 3d grounds instead of the landscape and of course the lanterns the statues the gate and the castle yeah so so basically I added all this in and then what's left for me to do now is really to focus on the bamboos and so let's move on to that so the first part of the bamboos is that I hand place these bamboo trees that are near the walls and near the pathways why because if you remember our reference pictures the bamboo trees they are near the pathways they are more exposed to the light in the middle so they are all bending towards the light so I needed to hand place them so that I can control the angle and add a little bit of Mm, variations to it the the variation in the bending the variation in the angle you know stuff like that so 
so I hand placed these bamboo trees just near the, the paths and then for the rest of the bamboos we will add the foliage tools into it okay so now I'm ready to paint my bamboo trees near the paths yeah so remember the three bamboo trees that I created so I included them in into the foliage tool so a few things to note the density I use is around 10 yeah I also have a variation of the scale from uh, 0.8 to 1.2 yeah or maybe 0.7 okay and the last one is make sure align to normal is unchecked yeah so if you check the align to normal when you paint it on the slope you realize that they are kind of like in an angle which is not what I want yeah so make sure it's unchecked so that when we paint it on the slope it will be straight up okay so so the first thing to do is of course we paint the bamboos they are near to the pathways yeah so so here just um just paint some of them quickly okay and here as well okay just this two portion so so don't worry about those in the middle we'll remove them later but uh yeah this is looking good what what you can do is of course maybe you can put a camera in your main scene you know so that you can you can um, monitor constantly how the main scene will look like okay so but for now i think this is looking good the next part of it is i want to paint the bamboo trees in the outer areas so so in these areas yeah that is slightly bigger so it creates some form of layering on the forest so if you look if you are in the path and you look upwards you can see that there are still trees uh, on top yep so so basically what i do then is um, to go back to the foliage mode and then now i change the size to around maybe two to three yeah but this time around i'm painting outside okay so around these areas okay so it creates a little bit of uh, layers um, for the bamboo trees okay so that should help a little bit okay and the last part is I want to paint again around the area so that um, I have more leaves so instead of creating another bamboo with leaves that that go down all the way to the to the bark I'll just offset these bamboo trees um, by a little bit and so that they will be painted below slightly okay so what i'll do then is i will just switch back to 0.7 to 1.2 but this time around the z offset i'll change it to say minus 150 to minus 100 okay and um, so i'll paint it around my um around these areas okay so so whatever is being painted um okay so oops yeah so whatever is being painted you see there are there are leaves there so that um you know it creates a bit more depth into the forest and and um it won't be so so how what's the word so sparse yeah so it'll create a bit more depth into the forest yep so there are a bit more leaves in the forest okay so i think that's really really helpful and and now we will move on to the other parts of the tutorial okay so now we want to look at some of the lighting that we use in this scene okay so a few settings that we need to turn on first of all remember that we are running this on dfao so make sure that the distance field is turn, uh, turned on yeah distance field generate mesh distance fields is turned on okay i also use uh, screen space gi so make sure that ssgi is turned on yeah and um the other thing is in our bamboo trees yeah when you import your bamboo trees make sure that um the distance field resolution resolution scale is set <laughs> and then two-sided distance field generation is ticked yeah so the resolution i went with two so it's a bit more aggressive but i really wanted the 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 ambient occlusion to be nicer so i set it to two okay and one more very important step that a lot of people miss is in your foliage 
make sure that you have um, the distance field options checked yeah so affect distance field lighting okay make sure that this is checked if not um, DFAO won't be generated for this yeah so as you can see once I checked it it looks a lot better now yeah so so this is a very important setting um, for the lighting yep and of course let's move on after this to other parts of the lighting okay so this is um, what you get if you only have a skylight it's like a overcast kind of feel to it but of course I generally for forest I love to add directional light yeah so when you add a directional light in a forest setting you know the sub scattering become very obvious yeah look at this portion where the light is shining towards us so you can see the sub scattering um, it really shows it if you use directional light so um, so let's go through what directional light what are the settings that we use again it's movable so this scene is fully dynamic um, the intensity after experimenting I felt 5 was was not too bad I also changed the temperature to 5000 because um, I want, wanted a little bit warmer kind of light yeah and um, I think the other things is uh, the indirect lighting intensity I increased to 3 and the scattering for fogging yeah so so basically as you can see it looks pretty decent now okay the forest is coming to place so other things that I add into the scene is of course uh, exponential height fog you know I'm not a big fan of, of uh, a fog um, you know some people just destroy the scene with with a very thick fog yeah so I, I like to keep it minimal you know it's more to kind of give it a feeling that the castle is far away you know other than that I like to keep it um, without as much fog as possible and as you can see my fog the density is very low um, just added a little bit of greenish tint to it you know to enhance the the lighting of the forest yeah um, I also added the falling leaves so this is done by the I believe done by Niagara if I remember correctly so if you want to learn more about about the falling leaves particle effects and stuff like that do comment on the comment section below let us know what what you want to learn or even if there are other things you want to learn further in this project or any other project related to Unreal Engine just um, let us know in the comment section okay so so that's about the fox mm, I think about lighting that's pretty much it so let's go through our post processing and some other last settings okay so for post process really nothing fancy nothing that changes the scene yep nothing much it's just a little bit of color grading I changed the saturation you know just a little bit the contrast also just a little bit you know I uh, shadows as well just a little bit of contrast nothing much and a bit of uh, tint to the scene color you know um, again uh, you know I didn't want to go all green that will destroy the scene just a little bit you know to give us the bamboo forest mystical feel um, and that's it there's no ray tracing effect and stuff like that so so that's pretty much it for the post process yeah and pretty much the only other thing that I added was the decals so so it's to enhance the ground so with with the decals I downloaded from mega scans it makes it a little bit more like a real um, forest you see if you if it is a forest without dead leaves then uh, it doesn't look like a forest yeah so so remember to add the decals okay so I think pretty much that's about it uh, of course and the trees yeah so there are other types of trees in the bamboo forest as well so once again thank you so much for watching this tutorial we are very happy to share this tutorial with you if you have any questions at all or if there's anything you want us to cover more in detail, feel free to comment on the comment section below. We reply every comment and we try to, you know, read every comments and see how we can answer them through a video or in the in the comment section itself. So yeah, please help to subscribe and like the videos if it helps you. You know, it helps the channel tremendously. So I'll see you in the next video or the next tutorial and have a great week ahead.
बाय